Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're gonna do a follow-up on Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy is breaking more records. It has become the biggest Harry Potter game launch of all time. Uh, in the UK, it's also beating Elden Ring. So sales are through the roof. Uh, the boycott had no effect. Well, actually, no, I think the boycott did have an effect. The boycott actually helped sell more copies of Hogwarts Legacy and cemented uh, its legacy as being one of the best-selling games of this generation. And we'll see if it becomes one of the best-selling games of all time. That'd be really interesting if it did. Uh, so we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants. Guys, over 293, almost 294,000 subs. Thank you. We're headed toward 300,000. Hit the subscribe button like us, ring the bell, all that fun stuff. We've been following the insanity that is Hogwarts Legacy. This thing has become another uh, you know, pop culture lightning rod, of course. We knew it was going to. Uh, it's been building up to this moment for years. Uh, we knew something was up when activists were trying to get the game canceled, when they successfully uh, got people working on the game canceled from their jobs and they even got the community manager of limited run games canceled from her job for simply being excited about the game and lots of the outlets said that they were going to boycott it and a website was set up to uh, out streamers who dared stream it and uh, I think they honestly thought that people were going to boycott this game in droves because everybody felt as strongly about JK Rowling and her uh, tweets as these activists did, and the opposite happened. Actually, Hogwarts Legacy became the most streamed Twitch game of all time. That's on Twitch, which is pretty progressive. Uh, and there were actually some progressives and some liberals calling out left-wingers, saying it was insane to dox and harass anybody playing this video game because at the end of the day, regardless of how you feel about JK Rowling, it's just an effing video game, right? But it's an effing video game that's doing very, very well despite, uh, despite hit pieces, like this one from Wired, that one out of 10 review that they're trying to defend now. Um, but yeah, it's doing very, very well. Uh, lots of news outlets that you would think would boycott it, like IGN and GameSpot. They're, they're doing uh, uh, guides and walkthroughs now. And um, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not going the way that they thought it was going to go. Like I said, uh, actually what happened was gamers and normies raised their wands and their middle fingers in the air and they told these activists where to go and it had the opposite effect as intended unfortunately unfortunately i think whatever legit points some of these activists may have had uh, now they're going to be ignored because of the ridiculousness of of the situation right so let's go out to uh, gamesindustry.biz. Hogwarts Legacy is the biggest Harry Potter game launch of all time. Uh, UK box charts. Now, that's not really saying a whole lot. I mean, uh, have the Harry Potter games been huge? I know Lego Harry Potter was kind of popular, but I don't know. But Hogwarts Legacy got off to a very big start at UK Games Retail and is comfortably the number one game of the week. It is the biggest launch for any Harry Potter game ever, with sales 64% higher than the previous best Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone from 2001. In fact, the biggest week for a Harry Potter game wasn't a launch week at all. It was the second week of the Philosopher's Stone due to the hype around the movie. Even compared to that week, Hogwarts Legacy was bigger by 2%. The result is more impressive when you consider this is just physical sales. Hogwarts Legacy would have received a substantial number of digital downloads. That data is going to come later in the week, whereas Philosopher's Stone didn't have any digital sales in 2001. Therefore, the success will be even more pronounced once all the data is in. A lot of people buying digital. Now, this is where it gets crazy. Uh, we're going to talk about Elden Ring. Harry Potter is the 26th biggest video game franchise in the UK behind the Forza series, but ahead of The Legend of Zelda. Compared to last year's big fantasy release, which was Elden Ring, Hogwarts Legacy's first week sales are up 80%. 80% more than Elden Ring in week one. That, that's crazy. 82% of Hogwarts Legacy sales were on PS5. And again, that's the PS5, which a lot of people don't have. A lot of people don't have a PS5 because you couldn't get a PS5 or they didn't want a PS5. 
So 82% of the physical sales were on PS5. What is going to happen when we get the Steam numbers? What is going to happen when this eventually comes out for Switch? It's going to be insane. This might actually wind up being one of the best-selling games of all time. And all the outrage actually just magnified the interest in this game a hundredfold. Most people probably wouldn't have cared. Like, oh, there's a Harry Potter game coming out. That's cool. Eh, yeah, cool. Okay, Harry Potter. That's fine. But no, because these activists were so ridiculous, they actually drove the sales of the game through the roof. Because it was forbidden, everybody wanted to know what was wrong with it. Um, so the remaining 18% was on the Xbox Series S and X. Again, what's going to happen when it comes out for Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Xbox One? Um, digital sales will likely reduce that gap between the two platforms as Xbox's digital share tends to be higher than it is in physical. Expect the game to continue to hover around the charts with the PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch versions of the game due to arrive in the coming months. Once it hits like the normie consoles, because again, a lot of people don't have a PS5 or an Xbox Series S yet. Once it hits these consoles, it's 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 going to be crazy. I, is it going to be good on the Switch, though? Is the Switch going to be able to run it? I don't, I don't know. Holding firm at number two this week is Sony's God of War Ragnarok with sales up 10%. Uh, and that's part of the, the bundle. Um, yeah, so here we go. Hogwarts Legacy, new entry, number one. I think it's going to be number one for a while. I do. I think it's going to be parked at number one for a while, especially uh, when it starts dropping for other other platforms. But yeah, I think it's so funny. It didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. Um, here's an article from a couple days ago on NBC News. Hogwarts Legacy debuts amid LGBTQ gamer protests over J.K. Rowling. It didn't do anything. Hundreds of streamers, hundreds of streamers are protesting the release of the game on Friday while raising funds for the trans just uh, or raising funds for the Trans Justice Funding Project. Some people were trying to stream and they were going to give money to the Trevor Project or some other charities and they weren't allowed to. They were bullied off of Twitch. And um, <laughs> this is a trans character, by the way. They have a trans character in, in this game. And I think it takes place in the 1800s, you know? So they were having a, a, a fit about the name of the character. It's a trans character named Serona Ryan. Sir. It's like... <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, anything, just any, any reason to, to cancel this game and it didn't do any good. It, yeah. It had 1.28 million peak concurrent viewers at launch on Twitch. So again, that, uh, attempt at cancellation didn't go very well. I really wish that all the people that got canceled leading up to this game, that they would get their jobs back. But, uh, I don't think they would want to work for these people anyway. So yeah, they're talking about the, uh, the activists that nobody's listening to um, a week long protest again, didn't do any good. Nearly 300 gamers and allies are launching a week long protest against the game on Twitch and discouraging people from streaming it. If by discouraging people from streaming it, you mean finding out who's streaming it and then harassing them in the comments and po posting spoilers for their viewers, you know, and they think it's completely fine. They think it's completely fine. Being an ally is something you do, not who you are, said Valerie, a queer gamer who organized the protest on Twitch. Just Valerie, Totoro babe, Totoro babe, she, her. That's how you spend your money. That's how you spend your time. If your support comes with restrictions or exceptions, like buying and playing a game like this, you're not being an ally. Well, 1.28 million people, 1.28 million people or not allies, I guess, uh, Valerie. In conjunction with the game's release, those participating in the protest will stream anything but Hogwarts Legacy on Twitch while raising money for charity before Valerie's protest stream had even begun. She said the online boycott had already raised more than 20000 for the Trans Justice Funding Project. There's nothing wrong with raising money for charity. In fact, um, was it Hassan Abi wanted to stream Hogwarts Legacy and give the money to charity, but they harassed him. And he changed his mind. So that's a whole bunch of money that could have gone to charity because he's a pretty notable streamer, right? Ultimately, there's no ethical way to consume a luxury good whose profit and influence prop up a hateful transphobic or prop up hateful transphobic rhetoric, said Veronica Ripley, a Twitch ambassador and trans woman who goes by nicotine. The video game, which Rowling has no direct involvement with, I'm surprised NBC pointed that out, 
includes features intended to make transgender players feel welcome in the wizarding world. Yeah, you can create a, a trans character, no problem. It introduces a character named Serona Ryan, who runs a pub in the town of Hogsmeade. While the game does not explicitly state the character is trans, it's suggested in Serona's dialogue with players when she said it took a moment for her classmates to realize she's actually a witch, not a wizard. Players are able to build their characters without having to choose a gender. They just pick a body type and voice tone without relegating either to a specific gender. Then they're able to pick whether they want to be a witch or a wizard. That sounds incredibly fair, doesn't it? It sounds very fair. And I know a lot of games are doing that now. Um, you know, The Sims does that now. Uh, but some trans activists who spoke with NBC News said these additions to the game seem shallow. They are attempts at a performance of inclusivity the same way the movies about trans characters played by cis people are performances of inclusivity. At best, they're like a quick cash grab and a pat on the back from rich executives, and at worst, they're actively malicious toward the trans community. Online, many have suggested the trans character's name, Serona Ryan, is problematic, noting that the first three letters spell out Sir. Others pointed out that <laughs> the game is trying to be more inclusive. Rowling will likely financially benefit from the game's success. Of course she will. And again, if, if you feel that strongly about it, you are not allowed to go to Universal theme parks ever again because you even go through the turnstile, you're giving her money because part of those ticket sales go to her year after year. That's part of the deal. Um, if you go check out Nintendo, guess what? You're still paying rolling. So you're not allowed to even go see Mario. Oh my God. So yeah, I mean, look, they are making themselves look really bad. This is NBC News, which normally probably would have uh, sided with the activists, or at least some of their reporters over there would have sided with the activists. And they're just like, hey, ahead of its release, Hogwarts Legacy announced on Twitter the game became ranked as the number one single player game on Twitch with 1.28 million, 1.28 million peak concurrent viewers. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and actually, I believe that um, the publishers of this game have have activists to thank for the success in part because again if they had not made such a stink about this game for months and years leading up to its release i don't think it would have uh, been the success that it is because everybody was going to check it out people were buying it just to stick it to these people because of cancel culture so congratulations you actually put more money in jk rowling's pocket and she's going to sleep soundly tonight I hope you can sleep knowing that. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.